Good afternoon, my people. I've been sitting here listening to some jazz music. I like all kinds of music. I don't own the rights to this music. It's Miles Davis, Alu Shah, it says, Round About Midnight, 1955. I realized that um, I had, I realized that I had, uh, you might see my phone time and stuff up there after a while, I don't know something. But anyway, I had realized that I didn't read, read a chapter of the book. So, I'm going to jump right in when the author was talking about how how he was turning away for a moment from color. I don't take from the book or add to the book. I just want you to know that. But anyway, it's called Color and the Afro-Asian Intellectual by Edward Shields. He said, I should now like to turn away for a moment from color as a focus of self-identification and consider possible changes that might enter into the self-identification of intellectuals, literary men, journalists, scientists, and scholars. First of all, their focus on nationality and civility might grow if the new states become consolidated internally as integrated national societies. They might also identify themselves as members of intellectual communities which transcend the boundaries of states and the limits of regions and continents. The intellectual community in its territorial scope and its criteria of admission is the most universal of communities. Its adherents are scattered over the world over the world's surface. To be a member of it, a person must either be engaged in intellectual activities or be in the state of, of mind that intellectual actions express and engender. In principle, no primordial properties such as connections of kinship, locality, tribe, or territory are valid in the assessment of the qualifications for membership in any of its constituent institutions or for advancement in its corporate or honorary hierarchies. Of course, in practice, primordial properties are sometimes operative in governing admission to membership in particular corporate institutions, but those who apply them know that they are contra, contravening the rules of the intellectual community unarticulated and amorphous though these are. The intellectual community is universalistic because it applies criteria of universal validity, criteria generally acknowledged throughout the world as true and relevant by those who have been exposed to them by education and training. Sometimes the intellectual community might seem to have no reality to be only a figurative name for a class of actions and states of mind. To be, in fact, no community at all. It certainly lacks a corporate structure, although it has many subsidiary corporate structures such as international scientific and professional associations. It lacks a formal structure of authority, although it has many subsidiary structures of authority such as universities, research institutions, periodicals and professional associations professional associations it lacks formal articles of faith but it has many quite specific actions and beliefs that define membership indeed as a single community it scarcely exists and yet it would be excessively and prejudicially tough-minded to deny its existence altogether its subsidiary more specialized fears certainly have more reality. They are more easily apprehensible. I'm going to stop right there, right there. 
I think I might have even read that part before. I'm not sure. You know how it is when you lose your place. So I'm going to start back up with talking about the world scientific community. Be right back. Be right back. Black power.